Good morning, everybody. I'm trying to find my way this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a special morning this morning. You know, about, I guess it was uh, a Sunday in May, we began saying to say goodbye to Jamie. And the church has transitioned from that goodbye to the blessing today of hello and our new beginning. Uh, we want to welcome you, Young, and Brother Hong. We want to welcome you and say thank you for being here. We look forward to many years of worship together. Thank you. We have our opening song this morning, Lord, Prepare Me, in the small hymnal on page 2164. Please rise and body your spirit.
precious.
Before I come here, I met Jamie a couple of times, and then Jamie praised you a lot, a lot about you. She said wonderful, wonderful things. Such an active people, active congregation. He praised a lot, and I, I thought it should be. And then, and I met before I came here, come here a couple of times. I clearly could feel that you are so wonderful, active Christians, serving Jesus Christ with your best. I praise the Lord having you as my congregation, as my people. Well, I come here by the order of the bishop, but I believe God has a plan to me to do a ministry with you here at Bethlehem United Methodist Church. As you listen to my language right now, I still have a language barrier. I came to the United States in 1989 to Chicago first, and then after two years later, came down here in 1991 to Nashville. Thirty years have passed, but still, uh, I still have a language barrier, as you are listening my English right now. So it's, that it's been my weakness with a different accent, and I ask you, be patient of my language as I am trying my best to improve and in God's grace I hope you will listen my English and then we will get together in doing God's ministry too. We have two sons, first son is a soldier and second son is working for government in Dixon and then my soldier son is in New York area serving the military army right now and then young she's working for home right now Actually, the, uh, she's my boss. <laughs> Why won't you have something to ask me? Don't come to me. Come to her and ask her. It will be done right away. As far as she's my boss. Uh, however, she's also happy to be here at Bethlehem United you know, Church. Well, as a minister, I love talking. I love talking with you. And then I come to office every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you have any personal concern or family concern or any joyful thing, beautiful thing to share with somebody else like me, just call me and come to the church and we will talk and we will pray together. Uh, it does not mean that I am talkative, okay? But I love talking with people, so I'm open to everybody to talk with everything or anything. Also, I love visitation. Well, it's my unique, uh, I would say, strength. People say, however, I love to see. I meet people and I visit people. By now, because of COVID-19, COVID uh, we have been limited right now. Still, I love to do that by request. So if there is anybody who is sick in the hospital, nursing home, who need pastoral care anytime, let me know. I will be very glad to go any place to pray for those people. And also, definitely, I, I pray for you. I already began to pray for you all in the beginning of July, as I, as I, as I was told that I go to Bethlehem UMC. Then I love to send a note. So if you, you have any personal friend or personal family members and relatives uh, with a concern uh, to be encouraged, come to me with their address, and I will be glad to pray for them, as well as send a note to those people. Well, I hope our church, Bethlehem United Methodist Church, is a community of joy and thanksgiving. I hope everybody will be joyful, everybody will be thankful, everybody has a smiley face. And when you come to church, smile, smile, okay? Make a smiley face, and then we share beautiful stories of life together. And I invite your good humor, clean humors and clean jokes, clean aggravation, that's fine. So we will smile together, at least in the church, encouraging each other. So as I told you again, I am so excited to begin my ministry with you. And then I am thankful, joyful, and thankful to God for assigning you, Bethlehem Congregation, to me for my so let's work together for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God on earth in this community. So thank you very much. Young, you are dismissed. <laughs> well, it's time to pray. But before that, if the joys, uh, 
Well, we have lots of joys, uh, but we have limited time, so we cannot do everything. However, at least, uh, uh, as you can see, the Britain uh, Ben Onro, he graduated Austin P recently, so congratulations. Ben Onro is not here today, this morning. That's okay, from, but from our heart, uh, we congratulate uh, his graduation from uh, Austin P College. And then, uh, I know there are two names on birthday, and the are Kalia, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, and forgive me, Migli, Migliaccio, Kayla, Kayla, and Brittany Spence. Uh, she's here, I know. You know what, from today, whenever we celebrate the birthday, uh, this is my 20, so far 28 years uh, ministry, 28 years of pastoral tradition. Whenever we have a birthday people, anniversary people, I invite them to come forward and do something and I bought this one from my money for you and then they will be standing in front of you and you will sing happy birthday or happy anniversary. While you are doing that, you will put some money. My birthday was in March already, it's gone. But uh, any quarter, dollar bill, hundred dollar, hundred dollar bills will be welcome actually. So put inside uh, in the here, okay, as you celebrate. Uh, and then I will put the uh, birthday sticker on your chest. Uh, it has been 28 years of pastoral tradition to me, so I cannot give up at uh, Bethlehem. So I'm going to do that anyway. Okay, so then we collect uh, birthday money. You know what? Uh, in the past years, uh, at some churches, uh, the ladies, uh, some ladies, uh, when they become 93 years old, uh, she came and put $93 uh, in the church bank. And then at the end of each month, uh, we are going to use the money in this bank uh, for those uh, who cannot celebrate their birthdays. Uh, like uh, Urban Ministry, you know, there are many people around us. Uh, so we are collecting those monies uh, to set, uh, in celebration of your birthday. So, Brittany, I put money on in today, so you may just come and then you may get the, the sticker. Everybody will sing happy birthday. Is that okay? Let's sing it all. Happy birthday to you.
can't believe I'm going to say this, but a girl that I teach with, her um, two-year-old, they found a tumor in her brain. So it's like, it's like starting this journey all over again. Her name is Abigail. Abigail. Um, her mom's um, Legio. Her mom, Melissa Legio, used to teach with me, and then she took a year off. And her dad, Jason Legio, is a 160th pilot, and um, they're going to be starting aggressive chemotherapy with her. Um, this month in August, and she'll go for chemo for three weeks and then have a week off. So. Melissa, thank you. Thank you. Yes, great. Uh, <coughs> we all know uh, John Cook. Uh, he's he's uh, he's been homeless for a little while, and now he's moved in with his sister. But we don't know how long that will last. So he just needs prayer. John Cook. Okay, John Cook, we are praying for him. As I told you, if you bring me their address to me, and I will be glad to send a note to pre-encourage them. So their full name and address or telephone number, whatever, give it to me. Okay? So in the name of the church, uh, we will send a note to pre-encourage them. Well, there is a note from Anna Moray. Uh, she worked for communion this morning, and she's the first person I met today. Uh, she asked us to pray for her brother, Charlie Bryant, uh, who will be released from hospital today, today due to COVID pneumonia. And his entire family is recovering now. It's a good news. So continue to pray for uh, the Charlie Bryant, Anna Moray's brother. Any other requests from you? Um, all the teachers that go back to work this week. I know, 7th, almost the 7th. All the teachers, as the students came back 31st, is that right? Almost 31st, okay, yeah, we should, okay? Um, I've asked all of you to pray for Gemini's friends. Now let us humbly bow and let me lead a prayer time. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful morning and thank you for gathering us in your beautiful church together, in one heart together, in worshiping you. Oh God, thank you for this new beginning. You invite us to open ourselves to new opportunities and we desire to be open to the new things. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we joyfully embrace your new beginnings. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your constant presence. You are with us calling us together in your spirit of unity, calling us out of ourselves into the world to serve others. Strengthen us to be your church in all times, a place where all are truly welcomed and embraced in your love, a place where we find ways you are active among us and calling us to join in your saving work. A place where the story of your love and grace and mercy are embodied. Rolled through the victory of the cross, your son Jesus Christ brought to the church during this time of adversity and scattering from the COVID-19, we ask you to help us remain united. Like a church in act, scattered due to persecution, as we scatter 
from this difficult virus situation, we pray that your church grows stronger. Lord, may it be reminded and revived to be what you have called it to be. May it continue to minister to those in need. And most of all, may the gospel of good news spread as it did in those times of persecution. O God, we pray for the members of your church here, Bethlehem, United Methodist Church. All those that are, we pray for a greater cause for unity with the body. And may they long to be together corporately as one body. Grant us endurance, patience, greater faith, dependence, and trust in you. Help us to embrace the call to be the church, to make disciples wherever we are. Through all of this, may we remain confident your church will survive and thrive. May we honestly seek you, O Sovereign God, strengthen your church. Lord, we lift up all those who need your healing presence, healing touch. There are many in our prayer list with all different situations and reasons. Heavenly Father, visit them. Touch their body, soul, and spirit by your healing hands. Bring them back to health. So they will praise you, and we will praise you. And we will know again that you never forsake your children. Heavenly Father, remember all those sick people, especially those family members who lost their loved ones by coronavirus. We are so sad, Lord, to know that so far more than a thousand people lost their loved ones. Oh God, comfort all those family members and encourage them, give them eternal hope to see their family members again in your kingdom so that they will comfort them. Lord, protect us. Help us to continue to, delete, to be diligent to do your ministry of comfort and encouragement and love, charity to those in need. Now, Lord, there are so many other people in our hearts and in our personal prayer list, in our Britain. We cannot mention everyone right now. So, Lord, we continue to pray for all those people from our hearts in silence for a while. So, let us pray in silence. God, hear our prayers and answer us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is now time for the children to come forward. Let's see. Nolan back there. 
to know if you remember the song, This Little Light of Mine. Well, you can't sing This Little Light of Mine without having a light, so I brought my flashlight, and we'll use it to, to sing with. This little light of mine. batteries in an unused flashlight for a long time or they'll, they'll get all corroded so I like to keep them out but you do have to have the batteries in because that's the what's the word I'm looking for that starts with a P that power that's the power for the flashlight okay now we can sing it this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you. Did you know the Bible says that God wants our light to shine? Do you think the Bible was talking about the flashlight? No, I don't think so either. I think he's talking about the light within you, that light that comes when you, when you know God and you read the Bible and come to church and study about him, then you get God's light in you. And his light gives you the power. And when you have God's power, other people can see you and they want what you have. So if you will let your light shine, the power of the light of God's power, then other people will, will see how great God is and want to know him too. Can you say this prayer after me? Dear Lord, Dear Lord, we want, our light to shine. we want our light to shine. Help us remember, Help us remember that, we need your power that we need your power so that we can be turned on for Jesus.
17, 1 through 17, and 15 with some response. <laughs> Kind of offering time, so but you did already in the offering plate. So rise, everybody, and uh, is that right? Do we sing still offering to Jesus? Okay, rise, everyone, and sing, uh, sing the doxology. Praise God from all blessings go.
Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob. But Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Enel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Enel. Leaping, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israels, Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. Our New Testament lesson this morning is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6 on page 169. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel for the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus Christ. For it is God who said, Let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And the Gospel reading this morning is on page 15, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from them, from there in a boat, to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed the broken loaves and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Here ended the gospel for the day. Hey, Jim, I don't have a beautiful voice, sir. I have only big voice. <laughs> well, actually, when I was in military service in my home country for five years, I breaked break my soldiers, 1,600 without microphone, with a live voice. Since then, my voice become big, big, big. 
So sometimes it bothers your ear, my deep voice. So please understand that. And thank you, Paya, for a beautiful flow this morning. And if you don't mind, from next Sunday, uh, if you feel blessed by Paya, you may give hand to God. Okay, thank you for the music for me, for us. From next Sunday, uh, you can do that. For preaching, let me take off my mask. And this morning, I measured my body temperature. It was 97.7. Was it okay? <laughs> so let me take off my mask for preaching on me. Thank you for the scripture for this morning, and my sermon comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6, under the title, Go, Preach Christ to the World. There once was a young man from a rural area who was convinced that he was called to preach. So, he joined the seminary and began studying. Before too long, though, he came to realize that he was totally unsuited for the ministry of his particular denomination. So he went to see his faculty advisor with his doubt. I was so sure that God had called me to the ministry, he said one day. I was out working the field and I looked up and the clouds seemed to be spelling out GPC. Immediately I knew what they meant. Go preach Christ. The faculty advisor thought for a moment and said, Son, are you sure? Those clouds were not telling you, go plant corn. <laughs> For most of us, it is much, much easier to plant corn than to preach Christ. Go preach Christ. As your new pastor, I have the splendid privilege to stand in this pulpit each Sunday and to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. But the telling of the good news is not the pastor's job alone. It is the business of the whole church. St. Paul tells us that we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shown in our hearts. We have experienced the light of God's love shining into our hearts, and now we must, we must let our light shine out in return. But how? How? How do we preach Christ to a world that seems to prefer darkness? There are right ways and wrong ways. There are better ways and worse ways to preach Christ. But nevertheless, we still need to deal with the fact that most people do not want to be confronted about their faith. It has always been so. St. Paul writes about the Gospel being hidden those who seek after the God of this world. And the point is clear that there is a way those people want it. So how do we preach Christ in such a world? We begin by acknowledging that this is our task. This is what we are supposed to do. But many people within the church today simply do not feel any responsibility to reach others for Christ. Reverend Donald Gray Barnhouse, a Presbyterian minister, tells about a postman in Turanga, New Zealand, 
who was to find the big money after repairmen found 1200 Christmas letters hidden under the floorboards of the post office. The postman had hidden them there when he realized that he did not have time to deliver the mail and attend the Christmas Eve party as well. Reverend Barnhouse draws an obvious error between this and those of us who have been entrusted with good tidings to give to the world but have hidden those tidings, tidings because we are busy with our own little affairs. Here's how we need to look at our task. The Duke of Wellington, the leading military general of 19th century Britain and the Prime Minister later, once attended a lecture where an articulate theologian was denouncing missions. He contended that missions were an economic drain on the churches and that missionaries often caused chaos and strife as primitive native cultures submitted to the changes brought by the gospel. He concluded that it would be better to allow those cultures to continue in their unconverted ways. After he had finished his speech, the general asked him, what were the final orders our master left? Well, stammered the theologian. He said to go into all the world and make disciples. That's the way I've always understood it, returned the Duke. I am no theologian, I am a soldier, and as a soldier, I know that my first duty is to carry out my commander's orders. When my commander, commander gives me marching orders, I march. All I can say to you, sir, is look to your marching orders. We need to recognize that truth as well. We have our marching orders before us. We are called to make disciples. We have no alternative but to preach Jesus Christ. So we begin by acknowledging that this is our task. Once we have done this, we must next realize that there are people who will respond to our message. <clears throat> Sagemen often talk about the law of average. If you see enough prospect, you will eventually make your sage. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar says that when he was a young sageman, he was told that you could take an older pad, tie it to a dog's tail, and if he ran around town long enough, somebody would stop him and sign the order. Allowing for some exaggeration, there is some truth there. If we would do our part, there are people who will respond. But it is more than simply the law of averages. Our God is already at work in the heart of those people. They are merely waiting for a preacher, not necessarily a professional clergyman, but anyone, anyone who will take the time to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Reverend Theodore Parker Ferris, a priest of the Episcopal Church, tells a story of a young minister of a city church. One of his most active members was a woman who was both generous and gracious, and her husband was a prominent, wealthy, and a man of great status and power in that city. 
but he never came to church with her and never showed any interest. One day the young pastor got the idea stuck in his head and he had to go, he had to do something about that man. So he made an appointment to visit the gentleman in his office on his turf where he would be the most comfortable. After greeting the man and after a moment of pleasantries, he told him why he came and gave him an outline of the story of Jesus Christ, his claim on each of us, and what following him can mean in our lives. And he concluded with the words, I think you ought to do something about this one way or the other. Across the desk during his whole narration was dead, deafening silence. The man never spoke, never moved. He just sat there like an intimidating stone. The young pastor was suddenly wishing that he had never come. He knew that we were called to be fools for Christ's sake. But he felt that this was excessive. He collected his wit and not knowing what else to do, he shared again the possibility for human life. Again, there was no response, not a sound. Now the pastor was wishing for a convenient and inconspicuous exit. But suddenly, the man reached for a notepad, wrote something on it, and slid the pad across the desk to the young pastor, who picked up the pad and read these words. I am so deeply moved that I cannot speak. Reverend Ferris reports that it was the first time that an adult in a frank, straightforward way had ever said the Christian gospel before that man, and from that experience, he became a member of the church and one of the great Christian leaders in that city. It can happen. It does happen. There are people out there right now who are just waiting for someone to share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Now give me one more thing that we have to be conscious of, however. We cannot share what we do not have. As someone has put it, we cannot give away what you cannot give away, what you do not have any more than you can come back from where you have never been. Way back when in the early days of the Montana gold rush, a small party of prospectors struck it rich. After months of hardship and difficulty, they had finally located a rich vein. But they needed more equipment for mining. Before returning to town for equipment, each prospector swore with his life that he would carefully guard their valuable secret. Thus they went into the town and assembled the equipment, but when they set out on the return journey, they found over 300 old seekers following them. When they confronted the townsfolk and asked which one of them had broken his vow, the townspeople informed them that no one, no one had. Their beaming faces had told them all they needed to know. What they were thinking about showed clearly on their faces. And there is a secret of a preaching Christ. You must let the truth of what you are saying shine forth on your face. Paul the Apostle says that, 
the light has shone into our heart. There are too many of us, though, for whom religion is only a tattoo on the surface. It's only a show that we put on. We have no commitment for reaching others because our relationship with Christ is such a low priority in our own lives that we have nothing to give others. And there is the biggest obstacle of our ministry to the world. The light must shine into our hearts before we can reflect that light to others. I was thrilled last week to read how the great Japanese Christian Kagawa Genjo first came to Christ back in 1903. As a young student, Kagawa lay sick in the city of Kobe when he heard a knock at his door. Do not enter, he said to the visitor, American missionary Dr. C. A. Logan, because I have a contagious disease. The missionary visitor nevertheless entered and said, I have something more contagious than disease. I bring you the love of God. I think we need to catch some of that same contagious kind of faith. Go preach Christ. That is our task. That has always been our primary responsibility as Christians. There are people out there who are waiting, watching, and wanting to know in very real terms that God loves them. But, we, but before we can go to the world, we must come to grips with our own faith in Jesus Christ. Does the light shine in our hearts? Then let us make sure that it comes to shine all over the world. Amen. To this worship is an extent, extended or longer. Uh, this, is, this is the first Sunday of uh, my ministry here. Uh, and also with the Holy Communion and my greeting. Please understand that. Now today is a Holy Communion Sunday, so let us be prepared for our Holy Communion. Now turn your hymnal to page 12, the service of all the people. Invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of your sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Mercy to God, we confess that we will pray on the field of the Indian Church. We have not done you a year. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. For we must be praying. We must be joyful of Indians. To Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue our repentance in silence. Here the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. As 
so we will be pronounced and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join the already him. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, from heaven and earth are full of your glory. For the time and Christ, for us to see and count in the name of the Lord, the Son of the Christ. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made you with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of it, my act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. For our Holy Spirit on us, gather here. And on these gifts of bread and cup, make them before us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ come in final victory. And in peace at his heavenly banquet, through your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory to you, Lord, mighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the prayer of Jesus Christ upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. He was his sin of an angel, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Leave us not in temptation, but leave us from evil. For that is our kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. You know the meaning of our church name, Bethlehem, everybody knows I believe. In Hebrew, Beth means house, Lehem means bread, like Bethlehem. Bethlehem means Beth house, El is God, Bethlehem is the house of God. Like that, Bethlehem means house of bread. That's the meaning of Bethlehem, the meaning of our church name. So as a joke, our church is a bakery, actually. House of bread means bakery. Christ was born in bakery. We, we joke ourselves with our high ministers. However, it has a wonderful meaning. We are a bakers. As a disciple of Christ, as we go into Bethlehem, house of bread, we are a bakers. Spiritual bakers. Bakers of love, bakers of peace, bakers of kindness. Bakers of hospitality, bakers of joy, bakers of justice. That is our identity as member of the Church of Bethlehem. I was so touched to stop at the uh, pick up there in the driveway in front of the church. Be kind. It's a very wonderful word, isn't it? Be kind. We are bakers of kindness to each other, the community. Jesus Christ was a baker. Baker of the salvation for our human kind. As you take bread and cup, remember, remember your identity as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now you are baker. You are bakers of Christ's love for the community, for the world. So we do virtual Holy Communion, and then we have three sessions. Our families can be uh, can be uh, can can kneel down together. Families, but if you are individual, use 
just the one section only, uh, you are invited to come forward uh, as I give you a uh, very end call. Please come forward to the table and give thanks to God for the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for us. And that your red offering will be used for those people uh, who need uh, our help through all one ministry. So please come.
pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Before we sing the hymn of commitment, I have another announcement to you. Uh, from next Sunday, from next Sunday, I still expect people to come to our regular worship service 10 o'clock. We will be safe as far as we keep all the guidelines, all recommendations and rules. We will be safe. So we keep distance, we wear a mask. And we talk much to each other, we will be safe. So I invite you to come to the church at 10 o'clock on this Sunday. However, still, I understand that those people who are not willing to come because of a virus situation, I fully understand their mind, their thought. Uh, for those people from next Sunday at 12 o'clock at noon, uh, I will provide the drive through blessing drive through blessing, which means uh, people will drive their car to the church. Look at our beautiful church from outside. They want to get off from their car. They will be in the car and I will welcome them in front of the uh, church on the driveway. So they will stop by, look at the church and they will pray with me. I will pray for them. It will take maybe three or four minutes for each car. So. If there are someone, there are, there are those among us who are not willing to come to church and help class service, that's okay, I understand. But come by at noon, 12 noon, driving their car and stop by the front of the church and pray with me for a while. And I will provi provide the prayer service between noon and 12.30, 12 through 12.30, 30 minutes. I expect all church members, uh, they come by at least once per week on Sunday morning to a house of God uh, and then pray at the church, in front of the church. So we will begin that from next Sunday, 12 through 12.30. So please spread the information to the others, uh, home church members or other people to come by. So we will continue to love our God, continue to uh, be present uh, Thanks for coming and we're going to sing together hymn of commitment to uh, all make of all disciples number 571, verse 1 and 4. Rise if you are able and sing together. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm.